Oh, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We are playing Traverse Death Shadow, and this time we are running up against Ad Nauseam combo. Um, this is our opening hand, uh, which is kind of a tasty one. Um, so slightly awkward, obviously, we've only got one land, uh, and it's not a fetch, which means that we can only reduce our life by two points. Um, we do have a Street Wraith, um, so hopefully that can draw us into something. Um, but yeah, I mean, the main difficulty is here is that we might not be able to reduce our life fast enough to uh, bust out these Death Shadows. Uh, this is one of the matchups where Traverse, uh, just searching up a basic land might be useful. Uh, so we can uh, turn one Inquisition. If we don't find a land next on turn two, by turn two, then we can use the Overgrown Tomb to cast Traverse, uh, find a Swamp, and then we can hit another, a second Inquisition uh, on the same turn. And then obviously we've sorted out our mana problems. Uh, so that works out pretty nicely. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how we get on with this. Leads to a Temple of Deceit. Descry. Gonna cycle Street Wraith here. We find another Street Wraith. Uh, so we've managed to reduce our life total down to 14 here, uh, which is pretty good. Um, so we're very, very close to casting these Death Shadows now. Trying to Breeding Pool. Obviously, it would be nicer if we found a Fetch Land, but can't have everything. Um, so we see our opponent's hand, Angel's Grace, Sleight of Hand, Spoils of the Vault. I'm not entirely sure how Spoils of the Vault works with the deck. I think you cast Angel's Grace, then Spoils of the Vault, naming Ad Nauseam, I guess. Um, I guess that's the idea, uh, If you've, but it kind of takes a lot of mana. Uh, I'm going to take the Angel's Grace, because that's basically one half of the combo, Angel's Grace plus Ad Nauseam. Um, obviously... Not too happy to be leaving a sleight of hand or spoils of the vault necessarily in our opponent's hand, but it's not much we can do about that. Uh, I think we're better off taking the Angel's Grace with the limited uh, removal options we have. Oh, our opponent spent a Lotus Bloom on the uh, the opening turn, so obviously he's potentially got quite a lot of mana coming their way. We've got to be wary of that. Temple of Enlightenment is another scry, sleight of hand for our opponent. Trying to slow down a bit there. Okay, so we draw a Bloodstained Mire for our turn, which is fine. Uh, matching means we can reduce our life total by three points, uh, which is useful with these Death Shadows that we've got. Going to Inquisition just to take out another combo piece. This time Spores. We see that our opponent's drawn into Ad Nauseam, so we've got to be wary of that. And we're just going to cast a Death Shadow. Could be more aggressive, I suppose, there. I quite like Inquisitioning and seeing a little bit further into our opponent's hand. But also had Serum Visions, which he could have taken instead of Spoils of the Vault. Um, I think I prefer taking the combo piece. Trying to Thought Seize, uh, which is good here. We can actually take Ad Nauseam here. And putting also draws into Lightning Storm, which, as far as I'm aware, is the only win condition they actually play. So we could have hit the Lightning Storm here. Uh, and it's possible that our opponent just doesn't have any win conditions there. Um, but some decks also run Laboratory Maniac and other cards of that nature. So I uh, didn't really want to risk that. So we're going to take the Ad Nauseam, even though Lightning Storm might be the only win condition in the deck. Um, I think either way we're looking like we're going to be winning this game fairly shortly. So tap for six with Death Shadow here. Play another Death Shadow. And uh, we can just pass the turn here, to be honest. Uh, we could have traversed and found a Street Wraith if we wanted, or another Death Shadow, but I don't think that really does anything. I probably gets a Lotus Bloom for their turn, uh, but doesn't have anything to, pop, uh, to put that with. Um, obviously, our opponent's got Lightning Storm and a land, um, so it would have had to draw something pretty impressive to uh, win through there. And yeah, that wraps up. Uh, game one for us.
obviously drawing uh, plenty of hand disruption was uh, was very useful uh, and we also got all our threats uh, already had a sort of threat heavy hand anyway uh, so that works out really nicely for us so in terms of sideboarding um, I think we basically want some degree of artifact destruction um, as far as I'm aware Pentad Prism still runs uh, Pentad Prism is still a card that Adnausium runs as a sort of mana generator and obviously you've got the Lotus, Lotus Bloom as well uh, more difficult because usually they can just crack the Lotus Bloom uh, as soon as they want but um, uh, but if we can blow up a Lotus Bloom earlier than our opponent wants then obviously that's helpful so uh, cards like a Braid and Ancient Grudge are probably the kind of cards we want to be looking at uh, Battle Rage is potentially useful as a way of winning the game a bit faster. Uh, they don't have any creatures, so we definitely want to be getting rid of our removal. So Fatal Push is certainly coming out. Stubborn Denial staying in as a counter spell. Um, it's handy here. Um, could use Surgical Extraction, but I don't love it. Um, it's a potential way of getting one of their combo pieces away. Uh, also got to be conscious that they might be running, uh, they're probably running Phyrexian on life or potentially Gideon instead. Um, so Maelstrom Pulse, uh, useful in that scenario. Um, so probably want some sort of artifact destruction. Um, either Inch Grudge, a Braid, Collahan's Command, we've got quite a few good options there. Uh, maybe want to bring in Collective Brutality, uh, but it's really only as an additional discard spell, so I'm not sure how much we really want that. I suppose it hits ad nauseum, uh, which Inquisition doesn't. Um, but yeah, I think we probably want some degree of artifact destruction uh, and Maelstrom Pulse. Liliana still seems good as a way of uh, burning down their hand. Battle Rage seems decent as a way of uh, just uh, ending the game that much faster. Fatal Push obviously bad. Uh, and yeah, everything else seems kind of fine really, I think we're just cutting the fatal pushes for some some degree of artifact destruction and probably the maelstrom pulse as well as a way of uh, killing um, Phyrexian and Life or, uh, or Gideon, whichever their uh, chosen uh, alternative to uh, Angel's Grace is. Uh, so that uh, wraps up the sideboarding uh, and let's go on to game two. Okay, so here we are, game two. This is our opening hand, which is no good. It's got no lands in it. Um, in general, it's just not particularly great for us. Uh, this has similar problems uh, in that we don't have any black mana. Uh, otherwise, this would have had been a, a pretty nice hand. Swap the breeding pool for a fetch land, and uh, I think we're okay. But um, looking to multi. Four, five here. Um, it's okay, I guess. We, I can, we can um, find an overgrown tomb with the bloodstained mire uh, and traverse for our second land if uh, that becomes important. And otherwise, we've got some hand disruption. So not the fastest, but I think it's okay. We've got a couple of hand disruption spells, uh, and then we might be able to just stick this Liliana and uh, kind of go off in that regard. Uh, our opponent has Leyline of Sanctity though. Uh, which I didn't account for, uh, which is obviously bad news for us uh, and makes this hand significantly worse given that Thoughtseize and Inquisition uh, are both targeted uh, and won't be able to work here. So, drawn to Tarmogoyf though, which is very helpful. Um, we're going to be able to traverse here for our second land to make sure we can cast Tarmogoyf next turn. We're just going to find our basic uh, swamp here, pass the turn. Let's play City of Brass, cast Serum Visions, Temple of Deceit Scries again. Jump into a Tarmogoyf. Can play Sight of Hand to a Temple. So, getting, certainly digging through their library pretty rapidly. And another Sight of Hand. So, uh, certainly something to be concerned about. Uh, we're going to be able to play Liliana of here, here, and uh, we can obviously discard one of these uh, discard spells, which isn't proving any use to us. Um, opponent discards a Simeon Spirit Guide, which nicely grows our Tarmogoyf before combat. Draw into a Abrupt Decay, which might come in handy. Uh, again, uh, Abrupt Decay is another sort of main deck answer that we run, uh, which can kill off Phyrexian on life and uh, Gideon. 
So it gives us some options. Again, discard. And discard's Lotus Bloom, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they didn't just suspend it. Um, obviously, we're going to dig through their uh, dig through their hand, um, so they might as well suspend it, and then at least they've got on board, so they've got a a lot of mana. So I kind of felt that was a bit questionable, uh, not suspending it. I mean, I don't know what their other two cards uh, were, but I think you might as well get it onto the board, and at least you've got the mana available. Draw Nihil Spellbomb. So, uh, I'm going to discard Traverse here, given that we've only got two cards. Types in the graveyard. One plays it, discards another Simeon Spirit Guide. Play Spellbomb here. Attack for four. I'm not entirely sure why I brought Spellbomb in. All things considered. Maybe I thought it was better than some of the other artifact options, just as a way of uh, sort of a cantrip for us. Um, but obviously it's not terribly useful here, given that we've got the time guy. Uh, our opponent ends up conceding here. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose things are going to get bad for uh, our opponent. Next turn, I'm probably looking at ultimate Liliana. Um, and then I think our opponent's probably done from there. Um, at best, they're going to keep three lands, um, and then I think life will be pretty difficult. Um, so that kind of wraps that up. So, yeah, Lele Lang, obviously pretty good and not something I was actually expecting uh, out of our opponent, uh, which is probably uh, my fault. But, um, but yeah, that's, um, that's pretty good against our discard spells. Uh, fortunately, it's not very good against Liliana. Um, well, it is in terms of sacrificing creatures, but... Uh, in this situation, there my opponent doesn't have any creatures, so uh, we can just keep up and ticking up Liliana, and uh, that was pretty effective, uh, along with this Tarmogoyf, uh, to uh, to wrap things up. Uh, in general, this matchup seems pretty good. Uh, as I say, Leyline uh, is something certainly something to watch out for, um, but otherwise, this matchup seems pretty good as long as we stick our threats nice and early uh, and don't give our opponent too much time. We've got a lot of answers to uh, the kind of cards they're going to play, like Phyrexian Unlife and things. Um, Obviously, abrupt decay and maelstrom pulse being uh, good uh, good answers, uh, and also we've got lots of hand disruption uh, to just interfere with uh, their combo. Um, so yeah, this matchup seems really favourable uh, overall.